When it comes to ancient Egypt, many images come to mind, such as pyramids, mummies, hieroglyphs, the Nile River, and luxurious cat statues. However, there is much more to this fantastic and unique period of history. In this video, I will talk about the most unusual things that ancient Egyptians did. Number 1. Training Baboons to Catch Criminals You may have heard about how ancient Egyptians revered cats, but did you know that they also held baboons in high regard? For them, these were true animal police officers. Apparently, Egyptian authorities kept baboons on leashes and released them on criminals when necessary. Among the classic hieroglyphs and works of art, including a fragment called Ancient Kingdom from the 5th Dynasty, circa 2498 to 2345 BCE, baboons are depicted capturing thieves or other criminals, biting them or holding holding them by the leg. In addition to helping the police, these animals were also trained to collect fruits, brew beer, and dance. They were so revered in Egyptian culture that tattoos with their images were found on the bodies of some mummies. Number 2. Sacrificing and Mummifying Crocodiles While archaeologists found mummified human bodies in Egypt, they also discovered crocodile remains. Their mummies were preserved, but not always in the same way as humans. For example, in 2019, during excavations of an untouched tomb in the necropolis of Qubad el Hawa on the west bank of the Nile River, ten reptiles were found mummified without the use of resin, which is essential in the mummification process. However, the discovery of well-preserved mummified crocodiles is not uncommon for researchers. It is believed that ancient people used these animals as sacred offerings, using them as a kind of food for the inhabitants of the afterlife or for the reincarnations of specific deities. In particular, crocodiles were associated with Sobek, the god of water and the flooding of the Nile. Number 3. The use of bull hooves, ashes, burned eggshells, and pumice for oral hygiene. Ancient Egyptians didn't neglect the issue of fresh breath. Using pumice, they ground up bull hooves, ash, and burnt eggshells into a powder. They then applied this powder to their teeth and gums to protect their mouth from hygiene problems. It's believed that this method was quite effective, at least when it came to mechanical cleaning. However, from a general health perspective, it was probably not the best since it caused significant bleeding of the gums. At various times, Egyptians also used a combination of pepper, iris flowers, and rock salt for teeth cleaning. Interestingly, it was these people who were among the first to invent toothbrushes or chew sticks, as they were called then. They made these instruments from branches, using one side as a toothpick and the other as a toothbrush. Representatives of this civilization also developed their own version of mint candies made from a mixture of boiled herbs and spices such as frankincense or cinnamon mixed with honey that could be chewed or sucked on. Number 4. Shaving eyebrows after a cat's death. You probably guessed that we'd be returning to cats in this video. Egyptians' love for these animals was no joke. They believed that cats brought good luck to those who owned them and therefore treated them with particular reverence. Moreover, they loved their cats so much that when the animal died, all family members shaved off their eyebrows to mourn its death and continued to grieve until their eyebrows grew back. Number 5. Bathing in Sour Milk Ancient Egyptians, including Cleopatra, bathed in sour milk, usually donkey milk, to improve their skin's appearance and condition. Today we know that sour milk contains lactic acid, which is a natural alpha-hydroxy acid. Such acids exfoliate the surface of the skin so that new, more evenly pigmented skin cells can form and take their place. In Cleopatra's case, it is said that 7,000 donkeys were required for her daily baths to provide enough milk. At least she didn't let it go to waste. Number 6. Using moldy bread to heal wounds. As already mentioned, ancient Egyptians were quite clever and resourceful, but their method of healing wounds with moldy bread may seem a bit strange. However, it was actually effective and became a precursor to penicillin and other antibiotics used today. This method worked because the mold on bread was typically a fungus that produced certain chemical compounds that killed or suppressed the growth of bacteria around the cut, scratch, or any other open wound. Number 7. 
The female pharaoh wore a fake beard. Hatshepsut was an Egyptian female pharaoh during the 18th dynasty. The only problem was that she was a woman, and female pharaohs, of whom there were only three, were not as respected as their male counterparts. Although ancient Egypt was known for its gender equality, this did not extend to their rulers. In any case, Hatshepsut decided to take matters into her own hands and began wearing a long beard in the ancient Egyptian style to appear more masculine. Some artistic depictions of her often feature this fake beard. Number 8. They tied pouches with mouse bones around the necks of infants and young children. It seems that people believed that rodent bones were capable of curing children of illnesses. For example, it is said that to cure a sick infant, their mother would eat a mouse and then the bones of that mouse would be placed into a small cotton pouch, tied with seven knots and hung around the child's neck as a talisman. There is also speculation that people from the lower classes used a similar method to cure children who had problems with bedwetting. Number 9. They used canopic jars to store vital organs. Canopic jars were vessels that were used to store and preserve the internal organs of a deceased person during mummification, and were then buried with them. Each jar held a separate organ, the first held the lungs, the second the liver, the third the intestines, and the fourth the stomach. As for the heart, it was considered the seat of a person's soul, and therefore remained in the body. Initially, these jars were simple and undecorated, but over time they became increasingly ornate, eventually representing the four gods known as the sons of Horus. Happy had the head of a baboon and held the lungs, Duamutef had the head of a jackal and held the stomach, Imsidi had a human head and held the liver, and Kabasinov had the head of a falcon and held the intestines. Number 10. Rumor has it that one pharaoh ruled for 90 years. If the legend is true, then King Pepi II holds the record for the longest reign in ancient Egypt, a whopping nine decades. He ascended to the throne when he was only six years old and lived until the middle or end of his 90s. He ruled Egypt during the Sixth Dynasty. However, many modern Egyptologists dispute this fact and believe that Pepi II ruled for about 64 years instead. If that's the case, then Pepi II is the second longest reigning pharaoh after Ramesses the Great, who ruled for over 66 years during the 19th dynasty. Number 11. Advanced Tattoo Culture. Nowadays, tattoos are not considered unusual, which is perhaps why the culture of tattoos in ancient Egypt is often overlooked. Archaeologists have not only discovered tattooed mummies dating back to the 11th dynasty, but also images of living women with tattoos in the form of dots and swirls on their lower chest, abdomen, and thighs. Many historians believe that these marks, due to their location, were associated with a request for protection and blessing from the gods during pregnancy. It was believed that only women of high status got tattoos. Over time, tattoo designs became more detailed and often resembled depictions of a deity. This was done to pay homage to a god or goddess. The process of getting a tattoo also had special significance. It was considered ritualistic and began with the creation of a flat brush for tattooing. The brush was made of an odd number of needles tied together. The brush usually consisted of three, seven, or nine needles, and the Egyptians attached significance to each of these numbers. After making the brush for tattooing, it was dipped in charcoal, soot, or indigo powder, and then repeatedly punctured the skin. Soot and indigo have antiseptic properties that helped prevent infection. After the tattoo was completed, it was rubbed with various herbs and oils, which helped it heal and fix the coloring agents. Number 12. Use of bread and beer as currency. As we have already mentioned when discussing beer-making baboons, ancient Egyptians seemed to love this drink and used it along with bread as currency between traders. It was believed that beer and bread played a central role in offerings to the gods and deceased ancestors. In fact, there is an opinion that soldiers and approximately 10,000 workers who built the pyramids were paid in beer and bread. Egyptians liked them so much that they believed it was a sign that the gods were unhappy with them when the Nile flooded or when they could not grow too much crop to produce enough beer and bread for the masses. Number 13. Building Toilets in Tombs Out of respect for the dead, ancient Egyptians incorporated toilets into the tombs of the deceased. This is explained by their belief that the dead were still alive, 
But in another world, so necessities such as food, water, bathrooms, etc. were still necessary. Number 14. Covering Pharaoh's Hair Pharaoh's hair was considered sacred and was never supposed to be seen. Rulers always wore a crown or headgear called the Nemes. These specific fashion expressions separated pharaohs from common people who were not allowed to wear headgear. Number 15. Wearing sandals with faces of their enemies. King Tut deliberately wore sandals with the faces of his enemies drawn on the sole to tread on them as he walked. At least 80 pairs of footwear were found in his tomb, and at least one pair had an African captive depicted on the inner sole of one shoe, and an Asian captive on the other. These people represented the enemies of King Tut's kingdom. Number 16. Creating hieroglyphs without vowels. Hieroglyphs, although consisting of 2,000 characters, contained only consonants. There were no vowels in them. Therefore, we will never know how the Egyptians pronounced their words in ancient times. However, according to some data, the equivalent of the letter E was sometimes included in hieroglyphs. In addition, hieroglyphs are considered one of the oldest writing systems in human history. Number 17. Egyptians considered scarab beetles sacred. The family of scarab beetles currently includes more than 30,000 species of beetles worldwide. They are often called scarabs or scarab beetles. Ancient Egyptians believed that the scarab beetle had powerful regenerative abilities. It was believed that the small beetle repeated the path of the sun, just as the sun travels through the sky, emitting light and warmth, the scarab beetle rolls its dung ball with eggs from east to west until the embryos mature and emerge into the light. The symbol of these insects can be seen in art and jewelry. Scarabs are also associated with the gods, Kepri, the god of the rising sun, Adam, the god of the setting sun, and Are, the god personifying the sun. Number 18. Making flyswatters from giraffe tails. This example is quite simple. Ancient Egyptians made flyswatters from giraffe tails. They were not only functional but also considered extremely fashionable. The functionality of these flyswatters is quite logical since giraffes and many other animals use their tails to keep insects away from their bodies. Number 19. Keeping Unusual Pets. We've already talked about how ancient Egyptians loved cats and baboons, but apparently they also kept other animals as pets, including hawks, ibises, long-legged swamp birds, lions, gazelles, and monkeys. Alongside cats, they also had domesticated dogs, which are still common pets to this day, although in ancient times dogs were more often used as hunting and guarding assistants. However, to be fair, modern people still use dogs for these purposes. The ancient Egyptian dogs included greyhounds, seleucus, mastiffs, and dachshunds. Number 20. Burial of pharaohs with models of their servants. In the early days of ancient Egypt, the bodies of the pharaoh's servants were buried alongside their deceased leader. However, over time pharaohs were buried with hundreds of miniature models of their servants. These figurines, called Ashapi, were buried alongside the pharaoh with the explanation that they were meant to do the work that the pharaoh did not want to do in the afterlife. The figures also appeared mummified, which makes sense since they were also meant to journey to the afterlife. The models were created for various purposes. For example, tiny soldiers, farmers, cooks, brewers, fishermen, and boatmen were discovered with their corresponding tools in their hands, which were necessary to perform their specific jobs. Inside each tomb was written a magical spell to activate the enchanted figurines. In particular, it was spell number 6 from the Book of the Dead. It went like this, oh, Ashapti. If the deceased is called upon to perform any work that must be done in the land of the dead to cultivate fields, to irrigate the land, or to transport sand from the east to the west, do it for him. Number 21. Belief that the tears of Isis flooded the Nile River. Ancient Egyptians believed that the Nile River flooded every year due to the tears shed by the goddess Isis over her slain husband Osiris. It was believed that she wept as a sign of mourning and in an attempt to piece his body back together. During the flood season, Egyptians celebrated the Night of Tears, floating down the river on colorful boats, praising their gods, and offering gifts to the river. In fact, this holiday is still celebrated to this day, 
but it is more of a tribute to the past and Egyptian culture as a whole. Number 22. The use of loincloths for self-protection. Some historians believe that in ancient Egypt, the population, especially men, used loincloths as a way to prevent the spread of diseases during intimate encounters. Hieroglyphs also show that men wore thin fabric to protect their lower bodies from the sun and tropical diseases during battle and to ward off evil spirits. It is also believed that they dyed fabrics in various colors to make them more attractive and enticing. This practice is also considered a worship of the god of reproduction and fertility. Number 23. Common Cases of Incest. Cleopatra is an excellent example of this. It is believed that her parents were brother and sister, and she herself married both of her brothers at different times, although there were no children from these marriages. This was often done to maintain a pure pedigree. It was believed that Isis, whom we have already mentioned, and Osiris were brother and sister who married each other to preserve the power of their family. If you look at the genealogy of pharaohs, you will see many marriages between brothers and sisters, even between parents and children. Of course, as we know today, this usually leads to the offspring having serious developmental defects. For example, King Tut had a congenital leg defect that caused mobility problems and speech impairments due to a cleft palate. Other pharaohs had other developmental abnormalities, such as Froelich syndrome, which is caused by extensive consanguineous breeding in royal families. This tradition continued until the last native Egyptian pharaohs came to power. Number 24. Requirements for servants to be covered in honey. Pepi II, whom we have also already discussed, was known as a particularly demanding ruler. Perhaps this was due to him becoming pharaoh at a very young age. But whatever the reason, he clearly felt especially privileged, possibly even more so than other pharaohs. He hated flies and demanded that his servants be covered in honey, which helped distract insects from himself. Pepi II was also known for other unusual behavior. Once, he asked Harkov, the chief of Aswan and head of one of the expeditions sent to Nubia, to capture a pygmy, a person of particularly short stature, and bring him to the court to dance for the ruler. But it is worth noting that Pepi II's contempt for flies did not reflect the attitudes of other Egyptians towards these insects. On the contrary, thanks to their agility and unwavering perseverance, flies were highly respected. Soldiers who showed special heroism in battle were even awarded with golden flies. Number 25. Wrapping the dead with kilometers of cloth. Let's start with an interesting fact. The invention of mummification is attributed not to the ancient Egyptians, but to the South Americans. It is believed that they were doing this 2,000 years before the first person was mummified in Egypt. The Egyptians sought to preserve the body of the deceased so that it could be used in the afterlife. The process as a whole was quite complex, and each step had to be precise and measured. One of them involved wrapping the body in cloth, the length of which exceeded one and a half kilometers. It should be noted that in ancient Egypt, not everyone had the opportunity to become a mummy and go to the afterlife. It was a privilege of wealthy members of society. After the body was dried and wrapped in cloth, it was placed in a stone sarcophagus. It was often decorated with carving or painting, and special objects, such as jugs, figurines, and mummified animals, were placed inside. That's all from me for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your engagement is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.